Hi everybody. One of my friends uh, asked me if I was going to do a video on how to put these cars together. I said, well, I hadn't really thought of it, <laughs> but it's probably not a bad idea. Um, trying to get this to focus a little bit better. This is the 1961 Ford pickup. Uh, so I'll show you how I clean the flash out of it and get it ready for paint and paint it and uh, do all the details. So first of all, he like said it comes in two pieces. So I'm going to work on the body first because I spray paint the body. Uh, everything else I just uh, brush paint with micro brushes basically. So when it comes to clean the flash, again, this is very thin. Uh, so you can just sort of take your X-Acto knife and trim that up, the window out. And then if you have a small file, you can go in and clean it up even more. So they're, they're pretty tough, really. I mean, you're not, uh, this is pretty thin. You're not going to really do any damage to anything you don't want to file but you know I'm not putting a lot of pressure on um, it's tough to do with <laughs> so basically I've got the camera suspended uh, you know and I'm trying to look around the camera uh, to do it um, so I'm not going to do the whole truck like this uh, but basically this first thing I do is I clean up all the windows so I'm going to turn the camera off move it out of the way uh, clean the rest of them up, and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've got the body, got the windows cut out pretty well. Uh, not any really other flash on it anywhere. Uh, you can tell it even has the Ford <laughs> embossed in the tailgate. Really amazing what these 3D printers can do. Um, the Studebaker... Um, I showed you actually has Studebaker on the real one uh, across the back, but I can't tell. It's got something on the tailgate, but I can't tell if it's just a bunch of lines to look <laughs> make it look like Studebaker or not. I can't read it, but I'm not worried about it because my dad, somebody had put a cheap paint job on his Studebaker, and uh, those were the same color as the tailgate. They never went back and painted it white. So this is the uh, you know, chassis. This particular one does not have a steering wheel. But again, an end scale, you're only going to notice. But some of them do have steering wheels. Um, you know, there's no engine compartment or anything. So it just, you know, when you get it done, actually, it's the ones that I've done already, I don't even know if I glued them together. I think I just <laughs> set them together. Um, so that's what it'll look like. So what I'm going to do now, may not need to do this step, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Uh, a lot of times when they would make stuff like this, it'd be like uh, castings out of molds. And they'd say, oh, it might have mold release on it. I don't think this is going to have mold release on it, but I'm going to get a little bowl of water, some dish soap, and I'm just going to rinse it off real quick. Because, you know, my hands might have, you know, oil on them or whatever, fingerprints. So I'm just going to uh, give them a quick bath and let them dry before I do anything else. So while it's drying, you can uh, research on what color you want to paint it. Now, I'm modeling the 70s, so this truck would be, you know, 15, 20 years old, maybe something like that. I want it to be a work truck. It's not going to be in a Barrett Jackson auction. So when I Google 1961 Ford pickup truck, I get some of them that are in some auction for, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So, but if you look through long enough, you'll find some typical pictures of what you want to uh, choose. Now, I'm going to paint it white. It may be boring, but white's a very common color for back then. Not as much so today, but back then it was a very common color. So I'm going to paint it white. Okay, let's uh, rethink this. Painting the truck white, which I'm going to do, isn't going to show you a whole lot. So let's do the uh, Jeep uh, Wagoneer. Now I'm not going to paint a silver stripe on it like this. This is like a fancier model. But I have some blue paint, uh, some Tamiya spray paint, about this color. So this will be a little bit more of a challenge, and you'll get to see uh, 
more what it actually looks like. So it's going to be more beneficial for you and it's going to be <laughs> a lot harder for me, which means it's probably going to turn out a lot better than it would have if uh, I wasn't filming it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, clean out the flash, wash it, and spray paint it light blue. So the interior of the Jeep Wagoneer uh, basically has steering wheel, a couple seats. Again, you're not going to see hardly any of this stuff. I mean, you might see the top of the seat, the top of the steering wheel, stuff like that. I just take a micro brush, and, and again, if this is like, six inches from the you know front of the layout you're not gonna see any of that stuff so i just take a micro brush and and just brush paint all this stuff so i'm going to do the uh seats and it's sort of brown which you know was a real common color for an interior back then um you know especially on this was 1966 this was not a fancy SUV like it is now, you know, like they are now. I mean, they were, if you had something like this, you were a farmer or maybe, you know, uh, it was more a utility vehicle uh, than they were for, uh, you know, grocery getters and soccer moms, <laughs> if that's not a bad term. Hopefully no one gets offended. I say soccer mom, but, uh, you know, Back then, cars were the big thing, not SUVs. So I'm just going to paint this, and I'm going to let it dry. And this back here, this you're not going to see it. You know, the front, you're not going to see it. Uh, so when this dries where I can handle it, then I'll start painting the tires and the wheels and the uh, hubcaps or wheel covers, whatever you want to call them. And that's the hardest part of these whole vehicles as far as I'm concerned making those look good uh, I don't know how Atlas does it on their trucks because they look absolutely perfect <laughs> so maybe they have a micro brush that's not as much maybe it's bigger than that I don't know they're smaller than that they get some talented people if they do those by hand um, so again I'll next video uh, I've got uh, the body painted, just have to let it dry. I will flip it over. I'll show you, like, again, back in 1966, vehicles like this, the inside of the doors were metal. They didn't have cloth door panels on them. Maybe cars did, had vinyl, uh, and had different colors, but a Jeep Wagoneer, it'd be a painted metal door. Nothing fancy about it, uh, just like the pickup truck was going to be a painted metal door. So I'm going to paint the inside uh, of the body the same color as the outside. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, to do this, I had to like flip the camera behind me. There's no way I can reach around the tripod. Uh, but since there's no writing or anything <laughs> on, on the uh, screen, I think... You won't even notice. So this is, um, again, I painted the interior like a brown, a tan. Really, like I said, if you see the top of the seat, you know, you'd be lucky. Uh, you see, actually, you missed a spot in there. Not worried about it. <laughs> not worried about it a bit. You're not going to see it. This is in scale. So this is uh, one side. So there is no gap between the wheel and the frame here in 3D printing. There, there's no gap there. Um, so basically the hardest part is to get the black. And then let's say that the wheel itself is the color of the body. And then there's a silver hubcap on it. And that's what's really hard to get right. So what I do first is I go ahead and I just, I've got some Tamiya flat black and a micro brush and I hold it. I don't have any mechanism to hold the workpiece while I paint. So I hold 
the other part in my hand. Maybe I'm making it harder than it needs to be, but that's that's the way I do it. <laughs> um, you know, when you're painting something this fine, it's, you know, it, it had to be a super stable stand holding the piece extremely still. Otherwise, when you touched it with the brush, it would move a little bit. And uh, I just prefer doing it this way. So, so what I do is I do the tires first. There's a little bit of white there. I don't think it's going to show up. But I'll touch it with some black just in case. Um, do the tires first. Then I'm going to do the wheels. Now, since I spray painted this with Tamiya spray paint, I don't have any Tamiya paint that brush paint that color. I may go to the hobby shop tomorrow because I need some paint if I'm going to be painting all these vehicles. Um, some different colors. Matter of fact, I screwed up the Studebaker already. I, uh, my dad had a can of paint from like Ace Hardware, which is almost a perfect match for for the red on that truck. And again, before he bought it, somebody had put like an Earl Scheib paint job on it. And if you don't know who Earl Scheib is, ask me in the <laughs> comments. But he used to advertise, at least in the Midwest, nationwide. They were in like big cities. He'd say, I'd paint any car for twenty nine ninety five, for And then... In, years later I'd paint any car for $39.95 I don't know if Earl Scheib is still in business or not but basically uh, they would just not do any prep work at all you had to do all the prep work and the packer that I talked about my dad he, he used to tell this funny story he wanted my dad was pretty cheap frugal I guess he'd say uh, he wanted to have it painted so he took everything off of it. bumpers mirrors every chrome piece off of it, drove it to Columbus, had them paint it. He's driving home on the highway. You know, I mean, again, there's no mirrors, no door handles, no bumpers, nothing. And the state trooper pulled him over. And the guy walked up and says, I don't know what to charge you with. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. And, and my dad explained what happened. He says, he just held up his hand and says, I don't, I don't care. Just get it home. Get it off the road. <laughs> I don't want to see it again. So my dad drove it home. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, uh, these will probably look like Earl Shy paint jobs when I'm done. <laughs> so, but, uh, so because I don't have to me a spray paint, you know, oh, I was telling you about the Studebaker. Uh, I tried to use that, that can of actually like automotive spray paint on this plastic Studebaker truck. It doesn't come out fine like to me a spray paint and it, started splattering so I just cleaned it off and I'm going to get some red to me a spray paint <laughs> to paint it so, so I paint the you know I'm going to paint the tires then I'm going to if I can get some to me a brush paint that color I'll get a little bottle of it if not I'm going to I spray some spray paint on a piece of cardboard and I dip the brush in it and then I paint it I do that all the time if I don't have a certain color or brush paint I'll, I'll just spray onto a piece of cardboard and use that to paint and then I'll put a silver dot in the middle for the wheel cover <laughs> so uh, so I think that's enough talking for this one so I will go ahead and finish this one up and then I'll show you when I get ready to do the rest of it okay I'm out in the garage uh, this is the body of the Jeep Wagoneer um, the paint I use is this uh, and I get under here to me a uh, light blue TS-23 so again I flipped it over and painted the inside too uh, but you're really not going to see much of that um, so I don't have any brush of the to me uh, light blue so what I'm going to do is see if we can do this on on camera I don't know <laughs> if I can I'm going to Spray a little bit there, and try to use the spray paint to paint the inside of the wheel. And 
then after I get this done, after it dries, I can paint um, silver hubcap on it. So it's not the greatest because uh, the spray paint. You have to make sure you get paint, not just propellant. I think that first time I just mainly got propellant. So. And it's sort of dissolving the. <laughs> I used water based paint on the wheels, and I, so the, maybe that's not going to work on this case. I think like it's working over here, but I may have to touch up the. So this is the hardest part. So, for me. Uh, so if I had to touch up the black on the wheels, um, and you could paint the black last if you want, but um, then I'll put the silver, like I said, the silver hubcap in the middle. I'll go ahead and touch that. I don't really need to because it's gonna be a silver hubcap. Uh, flip it over. You know, this is a real waste of paint, so I hate to do it in a way. But, you know, those little bottles that to me of paint are not cheap either. And if I'm not going to use it for anything else, that one came out better. But, again, you're always going to have to touch this up. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry. Uh, I'll take my micro brush and clean it, you know, and some brush cleaner. It'll be good to go. I bought like a pack of 15 of them, but I don't throw them away. I clean them and keep using them. Um, so let that dry and touch up the black. And I'm going to put the micro crystal clear in the windows. All right. So again, doing this on camera isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'm going to try it. So our model has a roof rack. Of course, in N-Scale, it's very, very, <laughs> very fine. There's no gap in there. There's no. So what I usually do is I will take a my tester's silver paint, and I don't even use a brush. I just use a toothpick, and I sort of like, I don't even hardly want any paint on the toothpick. And I'm just going to drag it across the top try to keep it as level as possible hey, you get the idea now so that's how I will do the roof rack it's also how I do da, 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 the uh, door handles, but on this one I don't see any really three-dimensional door handles. But I will do the bumper with a toothpick. Again, a brush, just uh, you get a bristle that's just off by hair, and all of a sudden you've got <laughs> you got to touch up the blue. So, so I use a toothpick for stuff like this. Okay, and I do the same thing for the headlights. I have a little dab. I just put a little dab on the tip of the headlight, and I just dab it on there. Um, so I don't need to paint this whole thing on camera. Uh, so I'm going to stop the camera and finish it, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is the um, roof rack. And the, see if I can focus on it rear bumper and there is a little latch or something right there in the center that I did put a dab of silver it looks like I got a little bit of silver right there I'm going to, have to touch up don't know how I did that uh, as far as the 
headlights go if I can get the car in here so those are the headlights maybe need to be a tad bigger and I'm gonna have to go back and look at the picture I got the bumper but I can't remember what color the grill is if it's chrome or if it is <laughs> uh, blue so I have to go back and look at the picture and if it's chrome I'll I'll do the grill So I went back and looked at the picture and the grill is silver so for this I used a micro brush because you can see it's got a lot of like ribs in it and I wanted to get the paint down in there um, so basically the body is as done as I'm going to do with the exception of the um, windows so I'll show you how to do that now uh, I do need to go back and touch up this spot in the back somehow I got some and I'll do the same thing I did with the wheels. I'll spray a little bit of the blue paint on a piece of cardboard. And then I will, uh, you know, touch it up with a little micro brush where that spot is. Okay. So the micro crystal clear, if you've never seen it before, trying to find where the camera is on this thing. <laughs> All right. Micro crystal clear. It's actually a, an adhesive, I believe. Um, but it's a white milky paste so I'll do the windshield and then I'll um, do the rest of it off camera the windshield is usually the hardest one because it's bigger um, and again you know I just discovered this stuff the other day so see if I can do it all right so you just take a glob of this stuff and you, and you try to you try to get it to span the and it looks like a big mess <laughs> yeah doing it on the camera is not easy all right darn it i had it I find I usually have to do it pretty fast. All right, see that? So I'm going to clean up the stuff around it. This stuff, believe it or not, will dry crystal clear and look like a windshield. So I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to clean up the mess I made trying to do it underneath the camera. Do the rest of them and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, that is what it looks like right now. A couple hours, that's going to be crystal clear. So I'm going to try to clean up with a little edge of a paper towel anywhere I got stuff on it, but it dries clear. So you're probably not going to notice it anyhow. Um, so while we're waiting on the uh, Jeep to dry, uh, this is the Jeep M38 that I did today. So yeah, you put a lot of work into these, but you can work on two, three, four, or five at the same time. So it's not like you have to work on one and wait for it to get done. So use the micro crystal clear on the windshield. Look just like it did when I showed you there before. Let me spin it around here. It's got a little gas can on the back. I painted it red. Spare tire. So I might touch up the top a little bit. I don't know. Wanted to look kind of weathered. Just thought I'd show you this. It's been a couple hours, so I'm getting ready to go to bed. In the morning, I'll be able to put it all together and uh, put the uh, you know body on the chassis and uh, show you what it looks like. Well, here you go. Sunday morning, the Jeep Wagon is here, is ready to go. Um, yeah. So I think it looks pretty good for a $4 car. Uh, maybe sitting a little crooked. I might need to work on it a little bit. But, no. And I still need to touch up that spot on the back. Uh, but, anyhow. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Just to let you know, um, you know, I'll be 62 in a couple of weeks. Um, 
again I don't have I don't use any magnifying glasses or anything like that I have been blessed with pretty good close-up vision I can read without glasses still uh, I wear glasses for far away but uh, you know I don't uh, don't have any special tools or anything it's just um, you know I think for four dollars uh, this looks pretty good sorry about the length of the video uh, but there's a lot of steps in this none of them take very long but uh, if uh, I mean, if you take your time you can have a nice looking vehicle so hope everybody stays safe today